And welcome back. You're watching the World Healthcare Congress Interview Zone. I'm Mabel Jong. And many see telemedicine as the solution to a lot of issues in the healthcare system, serving people in faraway places and in places that might not have access to care that easily. We have Dr. Robert Galley in the studio right now. He is with the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Thank you, Dr. Galley, you. for being here. And telemedicine, <clears throat> certainly there are a lot of different innovations in the area, but your program is unique. How is that? It is insofar as it started back in 2003 um, with just doing emergency care. Rural hospital care is very difficult. Critical access hospitals basically can stay al alive because they get special funding uh, through federal government. But one requirement is that they have emergency care 24 hours a day. Unfortunately, it's difficult to be able to recruit physicians to be able to staff that. So the local medical staff may have only two physicians on staff at all. And so to try to fix that, they were using their nurse practitioners to be able to cover. Now, a nurse practitioner who's family medicine trained can take care of patients cradle to grave, but typically in the setting of a clinic. So when they were in the emergency department, their administrator basically told them, look, you can handle most of this stuff if something comes in over your head, just call university and we can transfer it. Mm -hmm. So that meant we were getting patients sent to us that were really not stabilized all that well. <clears throat> and so the thought came, maybe we can set up a telemedicine system whereby we could be in that emergency department working with the nurse practitioner, assess what's going on and maybe start initial care until the ambulance comes to transfer or a helicopter comes. Okay, why is that such a out-of-the-box idea. It seems like other centers might have this too, but it's unique to your area. Well, it was unique actually to the United States mm -hmm. back in 2003. No one had ever done this before, which is why many of the hospitals looked at us somewhat askance. <clears throat> How is it that you could literally take care of patients on TV? Mm -hmm. As it turns out, and particularly in the emergency setting, no one wants to be in the emergency department, particularly when you have something that's critical that's going on. Mm -hmm. And yet they had a quick understanding that there was a board certified emergency specialist from the university in that emergency department assisting with the care. Mm -hmm. We also included an educational program with this, which meant bringing the nurse practitioners to university where we can kind of teach them what's going to kill this person in the next three minutes. How do you recognize a true emergency and what are the initial things that you need to do to stabilize that patient? So they both had training as well as our expertise at hand. And how many nurse practitioners are on your team um, doing this? Through the years we've trained probably 75 or 80. Okay. Um, each of, there are 15 hospitals that are in our network and all of that is based on the kind of rural atmosphere of your state. I think everybody thinks a place like Mississippi is pretty rural or a place like Kansas. Every state is rural and has their rural components to it. So this really is functional in a variety of places, but no one had ever tried it before. What needs to be in place for other areas to replicate what you have? Um, we've actually trained a number of different hospital systems to be able to do this. There isn't too much. Mostly it's the willingness of the emergency specialist to get involved, um, to understand that now they are going to be expanding outside of their own hospital, <clears throat> and also to, to get the understanding of working with a nurse practitioner or a PA, um, that they actually have the expertise, can develop that expertise, and can get really quite comfortable with that. We've had some pretty serious cases that you would not anticipate would be handled that, you know, including doing specialized procedures like cricothyrotomies, and, which is where you cut someone's throat in order to be able to get a tube down into their lungs to save their lives. And that happened just about three weeks ago when someone was stabbed in the neck. Okay, and what was the key to success in that situation? Uh, the key there is that we had, had Jason, this particular nurse practitioner, come to our training program where we have cadaver labs and, tra and, and simulation labs where we could show them how to do that procedure. Now, it's an entirely different thing to do it on a, a mannequin than it is to yeah. be able to take care of a patient. And when, when this individual is now spewing blood out of his mouth, sure. and then I'm telling him, look, you're going to cut the throat and you're going to be able to put this in, it's a matter of having that backup for him to be able to kind of assure him. He certainly admitted after the fact that 
he was a little nervous. I, I <clears throat> by, by the same token, he, he truly <laughs> saved a life that day. Sure. And what is the follow-up care like? Um, do, you, do you have a system in place for that uh, after the emergency part of it is over? Most of that is dependent on the local hospital. Um, so once they do get into that system, a lot of people want to stay in their own community. They're anxious when they go to these little hospitals, and they're not sure exactly who the physician is going to be. We had one hospital that literally had two people on staff. One doc was 74 years old, the other was 78. Oh. And they covered the emergency department around the clock as well as covering their own clinics. And they were worried because one of them was starting to slow down. Oh, okay. So when using yeah. nurse practitioners like this, you can now cover that emergency part, the off hours part, so that those patients can be can be treated in the department and then referred to these docs in their clinic. Okay. What are some what is another message that you're leaving with attendees about your program, doctor? Yeah, I I think the the problem of rural care is something that is with us and we're gonna have to do something about. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to attract physicians to go live somewhere out in the boondocks. Mm -hmm. They've gone through all of this training. Many of them have uh, acquired incredible amount of school debt. Mm -hmm. They need to have um, competitive positions, and typically that's going to be in a more urban setting where they've got more patient population to draw from. Right. But how do we take care of the people who live out there? How do yes. we take care of the people who are farming our lands and who are doing the jobs out in those communities? And I think we're going to have to use telemedicine more and more to be able to make that happen. Okay. And finally, Dr. Galley, a word on, on attending this conference and why you might think it's useful for others? <clears throat> well, I'm happy to talk to people about what we're doing, but all of this conference is about dealing with problems in healthcare delivery. This is just one of them. All right, Dr. Galley, thank you so much for your time today. It's, my pleasure. it's great to see you. Thank you. And I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.